Within this video, you will learn what the current reigning, defending Chat GPT Marketplace extension for Visual Studio 2022 is. Now, there is no need for me to introduce Chat GPT, as everyone seems to be talking about it. Now, currently, there are three Chat GPT extensions for Visual Studio. These are Ask Chat GPT, Visual Chat GPT Studio, and Chat GPT. Now, all three of these extensions offer to give you the ability to talk to Chat GPT in order to help you code within Visual Studio. So stick around to find out which one of these extensions you should install yourself. Before we get to the good stuff, let us start with the prerequisites. Now, in order to use any of these extensions, you'll need an open AI account, and then you'll also need to have a valid API access token. So to get these things, head over to the open AI website linked on the screen right now, and then go to the API keys and generate yourself an access token. Now, out of this list, Ask Chat GPT has been downloaded the least amount of times, weighing in with just over 900 downloads total at the time of recording. Now, Ask Chat GPT will provide you with a simple panel that will allow you to ask Chat GPT to refactor your code. All of the extensions that you're going to see in today's video can be installed directly from Visual Studio. Now, just in case you don't know how to install an extension, you can do it from Extensions, Manage Extensions. And from this online tab, you can basically search and install for anything you want because you have this big download button. Now, I'm going to install Ask Chat GTP, our first example, because I have it installed and have that download button. But basically, click on the download button, install it, reboot Visual Studio, and you'll have it good to go. In order to get the Ask GTP extension to work, you have to register your API key. Now, registering your API key this way is a bit of a faff. Basically, what we have to do is go to our Windows Explorer or do a search. Then we want to do edit the system environment variables. From here, we can then go to environment variables. And then from here, you need to add in a key. So you can see here, I've got my open API key. Paste in your key right there. So a bit of a faff, but once it's up and running, you will have this perfectly working little chat here. Now, what we can do is then add in a comment. So let's say we want to refactor code. Now I'm going to copy and paste this code, put it within here, click Control and Enter, and off it goes. Now, obviously, the nice thing about this, I can still carry on, do a bit of code. Now I've got my refactored code. I can click the Copy button, paste it. Even though this is the least downloaded extension of the three, I think this has got the best inbuilt chat window capability. Now, setting an API key in a system environment variable is definitely a faff. I'm assuming the creator did this, so they didn't need to worry about creating a settings dialog themselves within Visual Studio, which is actually pretty smart. Now, all in all, this is a solid extension. Now, before we move on, I needed to ask ChatGPT a question. Chat GPT Studio has been downloaded over 12,000 times, and this is by far the most popular and feature rich extension out of the three. Now, after you install Visual Chat GPT Studio, you'll get access to some context menu goodness. Now, the extension will give you the ability to run these commands on your code complete code, add unit tests for code, find bugs, optimize, explain, add comments, and add a summary. Now, it also comes with a handy chat window, so you can ask your normal chat GPT questions. To install Visual Chat GPT Studio, again, we go to extensions. Again, we go to manage extensions. Again, we type chat GPT. From here, we do a search. And then from here, you can see Visual Chat GPT. Install it, reboot Visual Studio, off we go. In order to get going with the extension, we need to add in our API key. So we can do this over options from here. If we just type in a chat GPT, 
we can see chat GPT studio we can add in our open AI API key right here now after we install this extension what we can do is then highlight any code right click and then from here you can see that we have visual chat GPT studio so from here I found the best ones are the ad summary as we can see woo, get the image URL for the specified course type and we can then write some unit tests for it let's just add in some tests off we go now we can even try and get this code and let's see if we can find any bugs no bugs found now just like the other extensions we're going to see we also have the ability to ask chat gpt any type of question now i found that having the ability to be able to highlight any bit of code that i wanted to send to chat gpt and then being able to define the corresponding action all from the context menu a lot easier than needing to worry about messing around with a side panel oddly even though this extension uses the same authentication process, this extension definitely did not time out half as often as the other options. Now, based on the responses, the create unit test and the create a summary definitely stand out as useful tools that I've been using on a daily basis. So chat and GPT has been downloaded over 5,000 times since this recording. Now this extension promises to give you the ability to query the chat to GPT server and then the extension will automatically update your code for you. Installing this extension is the same process as the previous two. So we go to extensions, manage extensions, do a search for chat GPT. Then we want to install the chat GPT by Iguana Technologies. In order to enable chat GPT, you'll have to register your API key. Again, we can do this through the options. So tools, options, from here, do a search for chat space GPT. There's this iguana one. From here, you can see we've got the open AI API key, paste in your key, job is a good one. Now, I have to admit, after enabling this extension, I struggled to make it appear within Visual Studio. Now, in order to make it appear, go to extensions and then click on chat GPT iguana. And as you can see, we now have this toolbox. Now, if I'm honest, I don't really love the UI here. You can see that we have this different mode. So open API mode of either completion or edits. We've got a command scope. And if I have to click between these little check boxes, it's not ideal. Then we've got some keywords which you can type in. Then we have to type in our command and then we can kind of send things off. Now, my biggest issue with this extension is that once we click submit, you can see my whole Visual Studio is now frozen. Now I am unable to do anything, so all I have to do is sit and wait. Now how long you have to sit and wait will vary, because often this will take maybe a minute or two. And as you can see, I'm still sat here, still can't do anything. Now the biggest issue that I personally encountered when using this extension is that when you ask chat GTP a question, the whole of your Visual Studio locks until it responds. Now, sometimes the extension might take over a minute to get any type of response. This limitation means you can't simply file a request and then get on with your work. Now, on top of this, just like Ask Chat GPT, roughly one in every three requests timed out. This meant that my productivity completely dropped while using this extension. Often, it would take me up to four or five minutes just to get an answer. And while I wait, all I can do is twiddle my thumbs like a complete numbnuts. Now, personally, I find simply using the online chat from the OpenAI website much easier compared to installing a plugin which times out all the time. And when you then combine this with the confusing UI, I really struggle to see myself using this extension ever again in anger after I've finished this video. So you're probably wondering which of these extensions is the winner and which one should you install? Now, for me personally, the only extension that I'm going to keep installed on my machine is that Visual Chat GPT Studio. Music 
Now, when it comes to thinking about the other two options, I think that the Ask Chat GTP probably has the best in Visual Studio Chat, but I'm not really sure I'd use it that often. And in terms of Chat GPT, as it locks the whole of Visual Studio, it's not for me. So we reached that part of the video where it's time for me to remind you, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe so you can see my next video. Also, if you have enjoyed these videos, then it does take me a lot of time and effort. I pretty much do it for free. So click on the like button to help me keep making these videos. Now, if you want to learn more about ChatGPT, then I've also created a video of the best chat GPT extension for Visual Studio Code. Now, the link to that video should be on screen right now. So if you want to learn more about it, click on that. Otherwise, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.